In South Africa lies a town which many people across the world do not know exists, Orania. An all white Africana town, you may be asking yourself, how is life here? How many people live here? Is it legitimate? What is the history of the town? Today, all this will be answered as we objectively look into the town of Orania. So let's jump into the video and don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Established in 1991 by Karol Boschow Sr., a Africana cultural activist and professor of theology, who also happened to be the son-in-law of former South African Prime Minister Hendrik Vervoud, who was referred to by many as the architect of apartheid, although apartheid had long been standing before his tenure. The town was initially stated to be created with the primary goal of preserving the Africana culture and heritage and had officially been established during the later years of apartheid. In December 1990, roughly 40 Africana families, led by Karol Boshov, purchased the town of Orania for 1.5 million rands, roughly $600,000, from the Department of Water Affairs. The land used was previously occupied by a community of squatters who had resided there. They had been relocated to new homes, however, this is a story for another day. The town exists as a cultural project rather than a racial one and is a legitimate town, as the initial basis is that Africana people are not European and do not have a cultural homeland in Europe, an example of this being KwaZulu Natal being the cultural homeland of the Zulu population. Africanas are essentially an ethnic group that developed in South Africa who predominantly descend from the original Dutch settlers. The Africana population can be seen across Southern Africa, such as countries like Botswana, Namibia, and Zimbabwe, plus many more. Africanas make up roughly 58% of the South African white population. Orania is protected by a clause that allows for the right to self-determination in South Africa on cultural and linguistic grounds. Essentially, Orania in a sense resembles a form of Bantuzan, which were territories that were designated by the apartheid government as pseudo national homelands for the country's black African population during the time. With the key differences being Orania's legitimate, Africanas are not part of any Bantu ethnic groups. They were not forcefully placed to live in Orania, and Orania was not built to strip its residents of their South African citizenship and rights. However, it can be regarded as a form of Volkstadt, which in concept is the set of proposals to establish self-determination for Africaners in South Africa, either on federal principles or as a fully independent African homeland. However, the town's leadership rejected the association to the term. The ruling government before the end of apartheid were against the idea of the establishment of Arania and had let it be, thinking it would eventually fail. However, it did not. By April 1991, the first inhabitants moved into Arania, and by 1996, the town had had 200 permanent residents. The town council was first established in February 1992, and the first transitional representative council was elected in 1995, after South Africa's own transition to a full democracy in 1994. In relation to the status of the town, a verdict was made between Orania and the South African government that the Orania Transitional Representative Council would remain in place indefinitely, which means it cannot be dissolved by the South African government. Another verdict was that they would remain in the area of the Tembelitle local municipality, but not be governed by the municipality, nor would they provide any service to Orania. The Representative Council is the local council in the Northern Cape that governs Orania. Residents of Orania vote for their representative council the same day as national elections. The main goals of the council is municipal duties and to represent the residents of the town with the South African government on the status of Orania. The privately owned town in its initial phase had a very small economy, as for the first few years the town relied on neighboring towns for food. There were few jobs available and the town had no meaningful economic activities as there was no money for further development. However, that all changed by 2000 as roughly $1.4 million was invested into the small town for various upgrades. 
Today the town has 239 registered businesses as of 2019. The average salary in the town is alleged to be 94,000 rands per annum before COVID, allegedly also. And all working sectors are provided by the locals of the town, such as manual labor, like gardening. Agriculture and construction are key elements of the town's economy, with developments such as one of the largest pecan nut plantations in South Africa, nine registered construction companies as of 2017, and a focus on small enterprise to boost our local economy. Interestingly enough, the town has their own currency, the aura, which is pegged on the South African rand. The currency comes in a form of a coupon. It is said that the aura notes have a three-year expiration from the date of issue. So aura is the primary means of exchange in Orania. In terms of modern developments, by 2014 a policy shift had been announced, acknowledging initial growth expectations had not been met. However, in recent years, the town has seen gradual population increase. Due to this, there are plans to further develop the town into a city, such as a sewage dam meant to accommodate seven to 10,000 future residents with various other developments in place, especially in terms of housing. As pre-COVID-19, it, it had been alleged that demand was high. Orania is split into two central areas. The first area is more upmarket and the other has more modest dwellings. The minimum wage is alleged to be 6,000 rands in the town. However, I cannot confirm this. Leadership of the town makes an emphasis on breaking the cycle of poverty. This in turn has seen an increase in low-income white South Africans coming to the town, as well as many other benefits such as interest-free loans from the cooperative bank in the town to build a home allegedly. Other interesting information about the town is, at the time of this video, Orani according to its residents and online sources is crime-free, which is highly improbable and there's no police force or prisons recorded to date. However, it's alleged that in 2014, a security unit was established in the town to deal with illegal activity. Another interesting piece of information is, you have to go through an application process to become a resident of Orania, and once someone is approved, they become a member of the community, either as a tenant or a shareholder. Apparently, there are no rules excluding people of color, but they would have to be fully committed to the Africana culture, heritage, and language, which may be viewed as aspects such as shared religion and history, and not just speaking Afrikaans. Other interesting information is that the town's leadership hit the association to the term an all-white town, and they have tried to highlight this over the years. the years, various notable figures and entities have visited the town of Orania, such as Nelson Mandela. The former president of South Africa visited the town in 1995 to promote reconciliation with residents who at the time were viewed as still supporting the old apartheid regime, not to say they did or didn't. The former president has said he received an incredibly warm welcome, as if he was in Soweto for example. He also visited and had tea with Bestie Fovud, widow of Hendrik Fovud, who was reported to be happy by the president's visit. Julius Malema had also visited the town in 2009. Jacob Zuma, the former president of South Africa, had also visited the town to apparently renew old ties with the town, telling journalists that the visit was to follow up on talks held with representatives of Arania in the past. Zuma has stated he had received a warm welcome by the leadership of the town. ENCA in 2019 had also visited and engaged with residents of the town. The town has mixed reactions and perceptions in South Africa and across the globe as a whole, which is more negative than positive. Most of the population of South Africa, black or white, are against the concept of Rania and see it as separate and a stronghold of older apartheid ideals, viewing some of the residents of the town of having racist ideals. Most of Afrikaners did not support the establishment of Orania in the early 1990s, mainly seeing it as unrealistic. There have been multiple calls for over the years for the town to be broken up. Another negative perception is around the eviction of the squatters who had been occupying the land. However, there are positive perceptions of the town, especially in the case of a somewhat self-sustaining economy and the low to non-existent levels of crime, as well as supporters of the ideals. There's even a song for the town of Orania by a local South African artist. However, in recent years, there has been gaining support, 
not of Orania, but the idea of self-determination by Afrikaners. Allegedly in relation to the perception in 2020 that South Africa is approaching failed state status. With a series of conferences, talks occurring around this, the speakers concluding that the South African government cannot fully provide for the Afrikaner population and there was a need to push self-determination. It can be seen that the town has various mixed reactions and depictions, good and bad, and that the onus is on us as viewers to make our own perceptions on the matter of Arania. If I had missed something or you feel I had made an error in reporting, please let me know in the comments section and I will respond to you. Thank you for watching the video and I'll make another video on District 6 in South Africa as part of this series. So don't forget to subscribe and like the video.